When Star Trek Discovery premiered last September, it had been more than a decade since the last Star Trek series was on TV. Discovery's producers faced the difficult task of making a new show that appealed to modern audiences as well as new fans, as well as satisfying die-hard Trek devotees. Every episode to date has contained at least one reference or callback to something from the vast 52-year history of Star Trek. Hey everyone, Chastity here, and today we're gonna look at our very favorite Easter eggs from Star Trek Discovery Season 1. But first, please subscribe to GameSpot Universe so you don't miss any of our comic deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. Be warned, there are lots of spoilers ahead, so please binge the show first and then come on back. Apologies in advance for botching any pronunciations, but let's start with the Klingon houses in episode 1. In the first episode, a number of Klingon houses from previous Star Trek shows are mentioned, including House de Gore from Deep Space Nine episode The House of Quark, and House Mokai from Voyager's The Killing Game. Also in episode 1, when Burnham encounters the Klingon warrior in Deep Space, he is holding a bladed weapon known as the Batleth, which Worf often wielded in the next generation. Worf! In episode 2, we saw Captain Giorgio's office on the Shenzo, and it contained a couple of Easter eggs. There's a bottle of wine from Chateau Picard, which is presumably owned by the family of TNG's Jean-Luc Picard, and the titles of the books on the shelf are all taken from episodes of the original series, including Mirror Mirror, The Deadly Years, The City on the Edge of Forever, The Omega Glory, and Whom Gods Destroy. In Episode 3, there's a Tribble sitting on Captain Lorca's desk. This furry creature appeared in the classic original series episode, The Trouble with Tribbles. Lorca keeps a variety of alien species in his secret laboratory, including the skeleton of a Gorn, which featured in the original series, as well as a Mirror Universe episode of Enterprise. There's also the bodies of Cardassian voles, which once caused an infestation on an episode of Deep Space Nine. When Lorca exposes Burnham to spores to demonstrate their power to move around the galaxy, she experiences a series of visions. Among the familiar locations are Romulus, the moons of Andoria, Starbase 11, Janus 6, and a Preserver Obelisk, all of which featured in the original series. You can't walk away from me, Lorca! I'm coming for you! You hear? You haven't seen the last of Harcourt Fenton and Mud! Episode 5's big Easter egg is the return of a fan favorite, Harry Mudd. This intergalactic scoundrel and con man first appeared in the original series, played by Roger C. Carmel. In Discovery, the office star Rain Wilson takes on the role. All matter native to our universe resonates with the same quantum signature. Nothing can change it. That's true. Unless... This is not our universe. The second half of season one kicks off with a classic Star Trek concept, the Mirror Universe. This alternative reality first appeared in the original series and subsequently featured in five episodes of Deep Space Nine and a two-part episode of Enterprise. And you can learn more about it in our video about the Mirrorverse. The USS Defiant is a classic Star Trek ship featured in both Deep Space Nine and First Contact. In Discovery, it's revealed that it also passed through the Mirror Universe and holds the key to Discovery's return to Prime. <laughs> Only the finest agonizer booth reserved for the treacherous Lorca. In episode 10, we saw the agonizer booth. The Terran torture booth has previously appeared in two Mirror Universe episodes. The original series is Mirror Mirror and Enterprises in a Mirror Darkly. In episode 11, when Burnham and Tyler encounter the Mirror Universe Sarek, he's sporting a little goatee beard, much as Mirror Spock did in the original series. In episode 12, Burnham and Lorca look over Saru's decryption of the data taken from the Defiant in an attempt to learn how that ship crossed into the Mirror Universe. While much of the text is redacted, and tiny, close examination reveals that it is essentially a synopsis of the plot of the two-part Enterprise episode In a Mirror Darkly from 2005. When Saru gives his speech to the crew of the Discovery about the chances of survival in the upcoming fight against the Terrans, he uses the phrase, no-win scenario. We have a duty to perform, and we will not accept a no-win scenario. You have your orders? On your way. This is the central concept behind the Kobayashi Maru, the famous training exercise featured in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and the 2009 reboot movie. A large holographic map of Kronos in episode 14 reveals a number of locations that have been mentioned elsewhere in the franchise. There's Kang's Summit, Caves of Kales, Lake of Lusor, River Skrull, and the Caves of Nomad. Also in episode 14, there's a direct reference to Captain Archer's visit to Kronos, which was the storyline of Enterprise's very first episode in 2005, titled Broken Bow. Admiral 
Cornwell explains that the Discovery's upcoming mission to the Klingon world will be the first since the Enterprise NX-01 went there nearly 100 years earlier. In episode 15, we saw Orions. These green-skinned humanoid aliens have appeared throughout Star Trek, including the original series episode Who Gods Destroy and Enterprises Bound, as well as three of the recent reboot movies. In this episode of Discovery, they can be found running a black market district on Kronos. One of the dishes we see being cooked up in the Orion market is a seti eel. This is the creature that Khan placed in Chekhov's ear in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan in order to control his mind. Discovery Season 1 saved the biggest Easter egg for last, the USS Enterprise. The most famous ship in the history of Star Trek appears at the very end of the season finale, piloted by Captain Christopher Pike and accompanied by the classic Trek fanfare. The fanfare wasn't the only musical Easter egg. The end credits of this final episode play out under a new arrangement of Alexander Courage's classic Star Trek theme, reworked by composer Jeff Russo to take advantage of a much larger orchestra. Check out the full list of Easter eggs in Star Trek Discovery Season 1 by clicking the link in the description below. So what was your favorite Easter egg? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.